Hi, this is Steve Nicolarat, and in this video we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this swing here from Albert Pujols. So what I always like to do is take Pujols down here to toe touch right here, and I want to get a couple of measurements. Um, the first thing I want to do is draw the bottom of a triangle from instep to instep, and then from instep to crotch, and then back down, and I want to have an equal lateral triangle. This base here, this distance down here, the base, needs to be at least as long as the sides of the triangles, and in this case it is. So this stride is great. The next thing I want to do is take a look at his shoulders, and I want to go from the top of the shoulder, top of the back shoulder, to the top of the front shoulder, and that's a uh, minus 10 degrees, and that's great. Uh, if I did Josh Donaldson, it'd be 18 to 20 degrees. Most youth hitters, most youth hitters, it's not a minus 10 degrees at all. In fact, the front shoulder is higher than the back shoulder, and that's not good. Okay, so I'm going to go to a heel plant here, and I'm going to erase those lines and I'm going to measure torque. Now when I measure torque I'm going to draw a line perpendicular to his shoulders and I'm going to draw another line perpendicular to his waist and I've got about 28 degrees of separation here. In other words the hips are going and the front shoulders are staying home at toe touch. 28 degrees is pretty good. Most major league hitters are between 25 and 40 degrees. Most youth hitters are at zero. And that's because they don't keep their front shoulder down. Their front shoulder actually is higher than their back shoulder. And their shoulder seems to be moving around the same time their hips are going, getting no separation, no torque. Okay. Let's erase this. Let's go just a little bit further. I want to check a little bit for uh, casting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an angle from the hands to the bat and the hands to the elbow. And what I'd like to have here is to make sure it's 100, 105 degrees um, and no more than that. 100, 105 and no more than that. I've seen some professional hitters at 90 degrees and even less than that. If this angle here gets bigger, meaning the bat is moving away from the hitter's head, that's what we call casting. And that wouldn't be a good thing. So a good time to check on this is after the front heel hits, just a frame or two past that. Now I'm going to go a little bit further. This is called the short approach. This is when the belly button is facing the front foot. Okay, and I'm going to take a couple other measurements. First thing I'm going to do is take a look at the knob to the elbow and the knob to the elbow. This is 119. And what we don't want is anything less than 90. More than 90 is great. More than 100 is great. 120 is great. 130 is great. But if it gets less than 90, what that means is this elbow is closer. It's moving this way towards the pitcher. And when this elbow gets closer to the pitcher than the knob of the hitter, when the elbow comes underneath and gets closer to the pitcher than the knob, we have bat drag. That's not good. Okay, something else I want you to notice is that at this point in the swing, at the short approach, I'm going to draw a line from the knob to the bottom of the shoulder and the knob to the just inside the, uh, the ear there, so to speak, the top of the shoulder. The bat needs to be in between, and it is. Something else is important is that the knob and the hands are still within the frame of the body. I see a lot of kids who have arm barring where this knob and this bat is out in this area here making for a very long stride, or excuse me, a long swing. Okay, 
Now, if we continue on, this is called the approach position. And what I want to do now is talk about the elbow down to the knob, straight line, that's pretty darn good. The bat is pointing at the pitcher. That's the approach position. And as I take you from the approach position to contact, what I'm going to do is measure the angle of the right elbow. And this right elbow at contact, the angle is at 105 degrees. Now if I go a few frames further and measure this again, that 105 degrees okay, will actually become 125 degrees. And if I go further, that number gets larger, meaning as I go from contact to this power V position, I'm extending through the ball. And I can test to see if I'm extending by measuring the angle of the right elbow. Now this is called the power V position. And to be very honest, it, it differs depending on pitch location. Could be here, could be here, could be like this. Okay, could be down here in a lower pitch but you don't want the power V position with the bat to be up here. That would be bad. That would mean that the hitter turned over or rolled over. At the power V position, I like to measure the angle of this break here. So if I go from here to here, I want to see something between 90 and 110. Great job here. Anything less than 90 is unbelievably good, but we'll take 90 to 110. If it's more than 110, that means this right leg is straighter which means the upper torso is actually probably going to be moving forward and the hitter wouldn't be staying back he'd be going out at the ball so this is a really good angle to have back here at the power V position you'll also notice the rollover here okay that rollover me is the represents the transfer of ground force from I'm going to let me get rid of this mark here. The ground force actually is going during the stride. The ground force is going forward. And then it's going to go down into the ground. And then when the hitter straightens the front leg, right here, the ground force is going to come back up. Back up the lower body, upper body, arms, hands, bat to the ball. Okay, now we're going to take a look at a couple things here. We're going to watch knee-to-knee -knee action. Watch the knee-to-knee. -knee. Back knee goes forward as the front knee locks. Watch the back toe. There's no squish in the bug here. Knee-to-knee, -knee, and the knee-to-knee -knee forces the back toe to drag along. The front leg is locking out. It's got to be locked sometime just before contact or just after contact to the power V. Any time in that area is great for the front leg to be locked. Notice the head position. At, when the front heel hits, this head position actually stays constant here, so it will not go forward anymore. It will stay inside that circle. He's rotating around his axis. Notice the swing is slightly up, and we can measure that. What we'll do here is take a look at the ball, and I'm going to measure the ball here and the ball here, all the way to the catcher's glove through the ball, and we see that the ball is coming down around 4 degrees. And in a good swing, you want to be on plane by the front knee, and pull holes looks to me like he's on plane well before the front knee, probably about right here. Of course, if he hit the ball back here, it'd be foul. But he's on plane all the way through this spot, probably to about right there. He's on plane this long. Guys who are on plane, guys who are on plane this long will have a high average. Guys that swing down and through, guys that swing down and through the plane of the ball and come up, sure if they hit the ball, if they hit the ball in the that particular area right here, sure it's going to go a long way. But if they swing and their contact area is back here, they're going to miss the ball. 
So Pujols is on plane for a very, very long time. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of things here. One last thing to talk about is bat drag, and I like to check the knob and the elbow. The knob is in front of the elbow, and you know if that's the case, I'm never going to have bat drag. So this is a great swing, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the annotation.